Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to show you how to do high quality ray tracing using Arnold in Maya. So the first thing that you'll want to do is to load in a model. I'm going to go to File, Import, and then select the model that I'd like to work with. Here I'm going to load in an OBJ model. If you're lucky, it will come in, uh, the model will come in in a nice scale that fits well within the, the standard grid. If your model is too small or too large, you may have to rescale it by using the scale tool, which is the R key, and then use the yellow scale box in the center in order to scale your model up or down. So to get started with lighting, the very first thing I'd like to do is turn on the outliner. This is very helpful because it will let me select objects without having to move things out of the way. So the outliner is this thing on the left. I go to Windows and then Outliner, and it will show me the outliner here on the left. This will allow me to select things without actually having to find them in the view. And that will make it very much easier to select light sources and ground without having to kind of find them again. The first thing that I want to do is create a ground plane so that I have something that will create an, a sense of space and will allow me to cast shadows. So I'm going to create a ground plane by going to Modeling and then just choose Plane here. Now, it's not visible initially because it comes in as a very tiny thing um, that may be uh, hidden by your model. And if you accidentally get it misselected, you can just go to the outliner and select the plane, and it'll be selected again. And what you want to do is just scale up that, that plane until it becomes a real ground surface. Just continue to scale it up until it really fills the viewport. So I've created a plane, and I continue to scale it up by using the, the yellow handle. At this point, I might want to save my model again, just so I have a save of the model with the ground plane. Um, I can give it a different number um, and then just do save. Now the next thing I need for rendering is a light source. I'm going to go to the rendering tab which is here in the center under rendering and I'm going to choose the third button in which is a point light source. When I click this it's going to create a light source at the center um, again hidden maybe hidden by my model and I'm going to use the translate tool to move it around. Now when you move it you'll initially see that nothing is happening with the display. There's no change to the lighting. Um, in order to enable lighting so that we can see what's happening, we're going to go to Lighting, and I'm going to select Use All Lights to turn that on. You can see that once I do that, the light source then becomes active, and as I move it around, um, it's going to show me what's happening. Now I want you to keep in mind that it's a good idea to move objects using the three arrows and not by grabbing it from the center. When you grab something with center, you're not quite sure which way you're moving it three-dimensionally, but when you grab these arrows, you can be very sure in which ways you're moving it, how you're moving it three-dimensionally. And keep in mind that since you're working three-dimensionally, you want to be a, you want to imagine yourself rotating and use the rotate tool um, by holding down option or alternate and looking around your model and seeing where that light source actually is. So you can keep playing with a with the location of the light source and you'll see that it lights both the ground and the object. Now, something else that can be very useful for arranging lights is to show shadows. Shadows will give you a very good sense of depth and it'll have a much better idea of how the space is oriented. So we're going to go under lighting again, and this time we're going to enable shadows at the bottom. And you should immediately see a shadow rendered in the viewport that shows you a shadow from the one light source that you've created. And if you move the light around, then the shadow should move as well. So one light source is nice, but in the real world, we very rarely have one light source on an object. Very often there's light coming through windows, there's light coming from um, other sources from overhead. So it's very common and it will look much more realistic if you use more than one light source. And I would recommend three as a minimum, that's called three point lighting. So I'd recommend three light sources at a minimum. So we're going to create some additional light sources and we'll use those to give a much more realistic appearance. I'm going to again choose the third button in here, and um, it will create another light source. And again, it may be hidden behind the model, so I'm going to pull it out and move it to where I want. This time it's going to be in a different location. And you'll see as soon as I have more than one light source, it looks more realistic, and you should see multiple shadows. So each light source should create its own shadows, set of shadows. Take a look at your scene and take a look at how it looks. I'm going to create one more light source by clicking on the third icon in here and pulling this light source out so that I have something worth it. Here I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to use the mouse wheel to zoom out. 
And I'm going to maybe make this other light, this last light source a lot higher so it feels like it's maybe an overhead light. So that's the basic setup for a three-point light system. We have several light sources, and we should see multiple shadows. Uh, now we can think about rendering and, and high-quality rendering. So to do high-quality rendering in Maya, we're going to use a technique called ray tracing. Ray tracing creates very highly realistic scenes by simulating how light bounces around the scene. It will use your GPU processor in order to calculate how the light moves around to create a very realistic rendering. In order to do this, it's actually quite simple. We go to the render panel here and we select Arnold as our renderer. Arnold is a ray tracer that uses your GPU and will create these realistic scenes. When I open it, I'm going to get this small panel that is the control for render. I like to put that down in the bottom left so that I can get at it easily without interfering with what I'm doing. Um, this play button will start the Arnold render, and you'll see that when you click it, the very first thing that happens is that everything turns black. Um, the reason for this is that because it's a realistic lighting, light sources have to have an exposure. So we need to be able to increase the exposure of our light sources before we'll see something with the Arnold render. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a light source. Now I don't know where they are, but it doesn't matter because I have the, all of my objects here on the left with the outliner. So it makes it very easy to select my point light source as my first light. Um, and on the right, I'm going to go to the attribute editor. Now, if you don't see the attribute editor, or if you see something else, one is that you may be able to click on the tab for attribute editor. This icon here also in the top right next to the little person is also the attribute editor, this third one in. And that should open this panel that shows me the attributes for the light source. These attributes will give me control over the light, including its color and also its exposure. And I want to go down to the Arnold section, which controls the exposure of the light source, and set the exposure to something like 10. And as soon as I do, you should see a much higher quality rendering. Um, I can adjust that, and keep in mind it's very sensitive. So if I go to 5, it still looks quite dark. 15 is going to look super bright, um, but for this I'm going to set it to 8 and see how that looks. So because this is an interactive ray tracer, you'll see that it starts out quite speckled and that if I just let it sit for a moment, then it will gradually converge to a higher quality. So the way that you work with this is you can move light sources, you can adjust their exposure, you can change their appearance. So if you just let it sit for a few seconds, it will improve the rendering cal the calculations and give you a higher quality rendering. Let's set the exposure on some of our other light sources. I'm going to select point light 2, and now I'm going to set the exposure to maybe something like 6. Um, and then the point, point light 3, I'm going to set the exposure of the overhead light to 8, uh, maybe a little higher. So you can see that by having multiple light sources, I start to get a much more realistic image, and it starts to really look like um, something that's really sitting solidly in space. Another thing I can do here is to turn off the grid. You see this um, helpful grid. I'm going to go under Show, and at the very bottom, um, fourth one up, is the grid, and I can turn that off just to disable this grid, and that will give me a kind of clear picture of what I'm creating. Uh, you can see that the car is set a little bit down into the ground. Um, that doesn't look quite realistic, so I'm going to just grab it, use the Translate tool, and lift it up. However, there are several objects here, several surfaces in my model, so I need to be sure to select all of them. And I can just shift select in the outliner. And I'm going to move the entire car up just a little bit so that it feels like it's standing, sitting on the ground there. The next thing I can do to make this look more realistic is to start changing the colors of the lights so that I can distinguish them. So I can go under here under color, and I can click on the color swatch. Now, this is under point light attributes, so if I, after I click the light source, um, I'm no longer an Arnold render. I'm actually opening the point light attributes. And now I'm clicking on color and I'm selecting some, uh, some color that I'll use for this, for this light source. Notice that everything changes in color because it's the, I'm changing the color of the light source and not the color of the material. So the light is illuminating everything with this same kind of color glow. Um, I'm going to go to my second light source and I'm also going to change the color of my other lights. Um, just to make this interesting. And you'll see that it adds a lot more kind of depth and richness um, to the scene by having different colored light sources. Um, and may, they can be kind of dramatically different if you want that type of effect, or they could be more subtly different 
and you'll get a kind of softer feeling. This will change the changing the light sources, change the, the sense of warmth or coolness to the scene and gives a feeling of um, the overall mood of the, of the scene will be set by the light sources. And remember, you can look around your object and see how it looks from different angles by using alternate or option and rotating around the view. And as soon as you like an angle, then you can let go and give it a few seconds and the ray tracer will converge and start creating a realistic image. So the last thing you might want to do is to create some nice images that are rendered from your scene. But here I'm going to show you a very quick way to capture some images um, to, do, to get a nice rendering just by capturing the viewport. What we can do first is if we single click on this attribute editor tab, it will hide it and we'll get a larger viewport. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take a capture of this viewport. Um, and there are on, the, on Windows, the way to do that is to go is to find the snipping tool. So I will um, go to start and then I will do a right click on start and I'll do search. I will look for the snipping tool um, and I'll open that up and that should bring up this little tab here. I'm going to give it a few more seconds to um, finish doing a high quality rendering. You see that it's finished this front wheel here. This back wheel is finishing right now. So you're going to wait for the renderer to finish when the viewport is finished creating a high quality image. And then on Windows, use Snipping Tool, or on the Mac, use Shift Command 4. Now on Windows, I'm going to create a new capture, and then I'm just going to select the area of the viewport that I'd like to capture. And now I'm going to click on the uh, Save Snip, and that will save an image um, where, to wherever I'd like of that, of of that render. I'm going to just call it Render PNG. So you can, you can, then ch you can change the angle um, of your model, and if you want to do another example, you can just open the snipping tool again and then um, start a new one here. So I can just create a new snip. So that's how we um, capture some nice renders um, without having to go through the full rendering process. But if you want more control over the render um, and you want to see like how do you actually create movies, for example, um, and render those things out, then I'll show that in a, in a different video. But this should give you a chance to create some nice renders um, using Maya and allow you to experiment with high quality ray tracing. Uh, so thanks, I'll see you in the next video.